and keep you in imperfect peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The year is going. The weather is changing. Yep. Anyone can notice that? The weather is changing. Uh, when I was growing up back home in Africa in the younger days that there was no no time, no clock, nothing. And uh, if we go to the farm with our parents, um, the only way they know the sun at this, the only way they know the time is to look at the weather. If they stand inside the sun and they can't find their shadow, and they're going to tell you right away that it's 12 o'clock. And it is, if you look at the time anywhere, it's 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock. Very early in the morning, if you hear the cock crow, they're going to tell you it's 5 o'clock, time for the Muslim to do their prayer. Praise the Lord. Time evolves. We have time now. Why am I saying this one? Sometime last week, uh, I heard the cock crow right behind my house. <laughs> and I was like, ah, this, this is strange in America. I've seen some around, but not closer to my, <laughs> to my house. But now I say, really? I say, okay. And uh, the following day, they call crawl again, and I look at the time. Exactly 5 o'clock. Wow. Exactly 5 o'clock. And for the past three days now, they've been... <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, it is good in Jesus' name. It is good. It is good. It is good. It is good. Time is evolving. Time is changing. But God never changed. He never changed. He never changed. He's just God. He invented the time. But he's not timed. God is not time. He's not bound by time. Hallelujah. It's my prayer this morning that whatever you be believing God for, and you're looking at time, you're looking at age, you're looking at months and weeks and days, and you're thinking maybe God is failing you, because God does not fail. He will hear you, he will answer you, and grant you all those hard desires in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This week is going to lead us to the month of October. Please, I admonish all members of RPP team. Now, for those who are watching, if you don't mind, the first three days, let's observe fasting and prayer as we always do. The first three days of the month of October, let's have what we call a corporate fasting and prayer just to push ourselves into the hands of God for the remaining days of the year. For the remaining days of the year. Now, Elaudi didn't say about this uh, second wave of maybe the first wave that is still lingering of uh, this pandemic. But we believe that he that has been with all, all this why will lead us through to next year in Jesus' name. Amen. But prayer is the key, brothers and sisters. Let's do the needful. We are all spiritual beings. Let's engage in the spiritual warfare, even as we live in this physical entity. Okay? So please note down in your calendar, the first three days of the month, that will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Let's observe fasting. We're going to be meeting on prayer line every 6 o'clock. Every 6 o'clock, fasting and prayer, um, first three days of the month. If anything changes, then we'll let you know in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please turn your Bible with me to the book of Matthew, the Gospel of St. Matthew. Chapter 11, from verse 1 to 12, we're taking our test from Matthew 11, 1 to 12. We want to discuss about the topic tied to the effects of circumstances on our faith. The effect of challenges on our faith. The effect of circumstances on our faith. Matthew 11 from verse 1 to 12. Praise God. Matthew 11, 1 to 12, and we'll read the count of three. One, two, three, let's go. Now it came to pass when Jesus finished commanding the 12 disciples that 
he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for the Please underline verse 3 of that chapter. He said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind receive their sights and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the ghost to preach to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. As they departed, Jesus began to say the multitudes concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in salt garments? Indeed, those who wear salt clothing and in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, I'm more than a prophet. For this is the he whom it is ready to behold I send my messenger before your face. Who will prepare your way before you? As surely I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And we'll ask you for that with all humility once again, acknowledging your presence for Bible say wherever two or three of us gather together in your name. That there you will be in our means. We have gathered on unto my but unto you, our creator. We want to hear from you. Let me decrease that you will increase through your spoken and revealed word. Amen. Touch every soul, those listening, those are here, and those who are watching. Let your word become life and tabernacle with us and change our circumstances. Amen. Thank you, righteous God. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So let me quickly define the word of faith. Define the word belief, define the word logic, and define the word circumstances, then I establish my case. Okay? Faith is a strong belief in God or in the doctrine of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Faith is a strong belief in God or in the doctrine of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Believe. Believe is accepting or accept something as true. Accepting or accept something as true. Feel sure of the truth. Believe is accept or accepting something as true. Or feel sure of the truth. Logic. Logic is reasoning according to the strict principle of validity. Logic is reasoning according to strict principles of validity. Circumstances. A fact or condition connected with an event or action. Circumstances. A fact or condition connected with an event or an action. So I want to first of all start with what we what I term a transformational faith. A transformational faith. There is none of us that are here that doesn't have faith. But when the gospel was being preached unto us, when the goodness of our Jesus Christ was being brought unto us, we didn't have faith. We didn't have faith. We heard with the reasoning, lay down reasonings. Okay? All Christians believe that all human beings were made and formed out of the dust. Every human being, even unbelievers, believe that. So it's a transformational faith that goes further beyond human beings who are made out of the dust. 
God breathed into them. Then they become a fallen man. They sin. Okay, they sin, and they were sent out of the Garden of Eden, of how they fell out of the grace of God, and they wandered by themselves in sin. Okay? All Christians believe that, all right, Jesus Christ is fully human, divine, fully divine and fully human. All Christians believe that. But with all that, you still don't have faith. What all that does is it changes your perception. It transforms your belief system. It helps you now to go somewhere beyond, okay, I know God from abstract. So I call it a transformational faith. Believing in all this one does not make you a man of faith or a woman of faith. To believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God does not make you a man of faith or a woman of faith. It's a statement that is applies to everybody in the north or south, man or woman. Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. So what? What relationship would you have with him? What relationship? Do you have with him? In Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith is a substance of things not seen. A substance of things not seen. And it's an evidence of things hoped for. Now, put all that together. Faith is beyond logical reasoning. Faith is beyond circumstantial evidence. But here, Bible is teaching us to have faith in what we don't say and substantiate our faith with an evidence. You don't see God. You can't describe God. But we know God is in existence. It's bigger than all. It's everywhere. How do, we, how do we know? Because we believe. We believe in the transformational evidence of God being in existence as our creator. And to every one of you, there will have been a time in your life that you will have questioned, who created God? I asked that question when I become born again Christian. I struggle with it. Okay, God created, okay. And the story went and on and on. Then the question go back, who created God? Why should I believe in someone that had no beginning or had no end that I can see? I struggle with that as a young Christian. Are we together? Am I the only one? But now comes faith and belief. Now comes faith and belief. Romans 10, 17. See, faith, faith comments by hearing and hearing the word of God. To a transformed Christian who has been fed with the word of God, who has been introduced and exposed to the word of God. Now you can't question who is God. Your faith, your faith is built up based on the evidence of the word of God. Our faith is strengthened through the word of God. The only way your faith is strengthened is by reading the word of God constantly. Meditating on the word of God constantly. Praying the word of God constantly. Observing the doctrine of the Bible constantly. Forsaking not the guiding of the saints constantly. Coming and becoming over and over to the guiding of the saints constantly. Because there is always a word for you. There is always a word for you. That's how you build up your faith. So I hear people say, I'm not growing spiritually in that church. Excuse me? Excuse me. You've not given yourself 
unto the thoughts of the Lord. You've not given yourself to study the word by yourself. That's how you grow. That's how you grow spiritually. You've not been coming to the church to be taught. That's why you're not growing. Or you come and you're part of the mixed multitude. You don't know why you're here. That's why you're not growing. You want to grow in the things of God. Give yourself enough time to study the word of God. If you don't understand, ask questions. Come to Bible studies. Probe the reasoning of whoever that is teaching you. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Praise the Lord. Our faith must be anchored on the principle of validity. Here come the logic now. What you believe sometimes can hurt you. It can haunt you. But even in the midst of it all, anchor your soul to what you believe. I said it again. I'll take an example. To a young lady, a young, a young, a young single lady, <coughs> Oh, who knows of a young man? I know the young man to be all over the place. And suddenly the young man walked to him and said, you know what, I love you. I want to be with you. And the young lady, giving to the word, the sweet word of this man, knowing quite well with evidence that this man is irresponsible. But God carried it away and said, okay, maybe I can change him. Hello? Am I the only one? I've heard it thousands of times. All of the girls just, yeah, okay. He, he made mistake. Okay, let me, let me let him go. I, 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 maybe if I give him a second chance, he's going to change. Or I, I will change him over a period of time. And he, she said, he agreed to go on with her. Go with him. Maybe they get married. Five years or two years down the road. The same thing she noticed in her before they started dating. The man started showing it. Now she want to blame the man that the man has not changed. No, she will blame herself. Because she had the evidence. She had the logic to reason. But she refused. She got carried away, thinking I would change him. Oh, my time, he would change. No man would change. No woman would change from their habit. It is only God Amen. that can change us. Don't stay with someone because you think you can change them. And this goes to other religion. I tell people when I come to cancer. You're a Christian. You're dating a Muslim. Let me say it the way it is. And you think of how he's telling you, oh, I will change and convert to a Christian because he loves you. After giving you a ring, that man will change you to become a Muslim. He will. Now you are in trap. You are married. And you don't want to go through the shame of divorce. So, okay, okay, maybe I go with you to a mosque, then you call, come with me to a church. And before you know it, he will win the case at the end of the day. Praise the Lord. Your faith must be anchored on something. The evidence, the evidence of your faith. You must anchor your soul with something, brothers and sisters. Sometimes last year, we sent Anna to, to Queens to yeah to Queens to pick up somebody. And uh, on our way, she called and said, "I'm hearing a noise from the car." Hmm. I went back to my logic reasoning, checked the engine, just full oil, 
everything is okay. The tire is okay. I said, keep going. She called me 10 minutes later. I said, Dad, I'm still hearing this thing. I said, go put on your phone. Let me see if I can hear the noise. She put on the phone. I can't, I can't deduce the noise. I can't, I can't put it together. I said, keep going. The engine is okay. I said, go out and check the tire. Everything is okay, she said. But the noise kept coming. And after a while, on our way coming now, she called again and said, I said, at this time now, at this time now. Now, in my logical reasoning, I have ascertained that the car, the engine, everything is fine. The tire, everything should be fine. So I have that confidence. Keep going. But now, when circumstances, when circumstances get done on me as a father, as a parent, knowing that the life of my young girl could be in danger, she was casual as not to her faith, that's where we're going. Knowing quite well now, beyond logical reasoning, that now the circumstance surrounding the situation is becoming overwhelming and troubling to me, I told her, please stop where you are. Call Auntie Nikki, get back to church. When I finish from church, I will go back and see the car. Not that I did not have faith in the car, in the engine, the component, everything about the car, but circumstances beyond my logical reasoning took over my belief system. And I said to my daughter, hop off the car, your pocket anywhere. Get, your, get yourself back here. When we finish from here, we will go there. Behold, after we finish myself from Pastor Abbey, we drove down there. It was a tire. The young lady was not privy to know that the tire rotates when it moves. So when she come out of the tire after the car, she just looked at the side. <laughs> I know she will understand me if she see this or maybe she's watching now. I'm not putting you on the stock spot, baby. <laughs> She just look and listen. I said, daddy, is fine, daddy. And I said, keep going. Until when the circumstances pressured my faith and my belief system, I have to give in. Not that I lack faith. Not that I do not believe in the strength of the car or doubt my daughter now. But I knew I was endangering her life. Leave the car there. Come back here. And she got in here. I didn't even bother to ask her. After the church service, said, where, which location? We drove down there. We look at it. We changed the tire. She drove the, 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 the car back in. <laughs> tire. Brothers and sisters, your faith will be tested. Yeah. Let's say, your faith will be tested. How? I don't know. Look at the book of, Hebrew, uh, the book of James chapter 1. Am I, am I talking to somebody this morning? You see yourself in circumstances, not that you are doubting God. Not that you don't believe in God. But everything is proving wrong to all that you believe. Everything. James chapter 1, let's look at 2 through 4. My brother, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, do you see it in your Bible? Your faith will be tried. Your faith in Christ will be tried. It will be tested. Not tempted. It will be tested. It will be tried. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. When you go into the circumstances, brother and sister, pray that the Lord be with you. Don't pray that the Lord take you out of it. Because there is no way out. You cannot escape your, your test. I can't escape my test. But while we in that test, pray that the Lord strengthens you. You hear Job say, though he slay me. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't hear you. He was in his own lonely time, dark moment of his life. He was facing the worst scenario you can think of. But he said, with affirmation in Christ, he has anchored his faith and believed unto the word of God. He has known God to be a faithful God. 
His wife suggested unto him, cast him and die. Say, don't God slay me. Yeah, will I trust me? Let him kill me. He made me. Oh. We don't pray to be tested the way Job was tested. But can you imagine a man to lose everything over a period of time? Look, everything she, he's worked for, labored for, a man. And yet he say, God give it. God take it. Glory be to God. Children were gone, houses were gone, source of income, source of resources were gone. He opened up his door and said, can God continue to be good without doing evil? He said, he give it, he take it. Glory be to him. Why? He has seen beyond what he was going through. He has seen that even though he allowed this, it does not cost him anything to restore him. Many of us give up easily. Christians believe us. We give up easily. We give up easily. Easily. And that's why we don't see those desires, dreams, and vision coming to fruition and reality. We give up so easily. Offense will come. Challenges will come. But they are meant to test our faith. Not to destroy our relationship with God. Just to test our faith. No one is pulling up a gun and say, um, renounce your faith in Christ. No, no one is doing that to us in this part of the world. But do you know it's happening somewhere else? Do you know it's happening somewhere else? And some will allow them to be shot than to renounce their faith in Christ. At one point, God forbid, somebody walk in and I say, renounce your faith in Christ, then you leave. What will be our reactions? I'll leave that for you to answer. I'll leave, I'll leave that for you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, our, our God is a living God. Yes. He is with us. Let's run through the, the Bible and, and, and the story of John the Baptist we all know. This was a man who said in John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God who come to take away the sin of the world. This was a man that would have known by history how his own pregnancy come to play. The mother and the father would have let him know. They would have told him Israel what happened when Mary went to Elizabeth. They would have told him. They would have told him about Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. They would have told him they did because they were cousins. Okay. He asserted that God told him that upon whoever he sees the spirit descending like a dove, she is his own son. He, he, he has sat to it. That God had already told him from above that upon whoever that he sees the spirit descending like a dove, that that person is the true son of God. He went, he knew that he was the error. He was the messenger that was sent ahead of Jesus Christ. And his own message was for them to return from their evil and change because the Son of God is coming. He was asked, are you the Son of God? All he says, no, there is one coming after me. Who shall listen? I'm not worthy to untie. He knew. And when he was baptized in the river, Jordan and Jesus Christ walking there. From afar he said, No, I cannot. I'm not worthy to baptize you. You are made to baptize me. I'm not the one to. He knew the authority of Jesus Christ. He 
reluctantly obey when Christ said, in fulfillment of all righteousness, please baptize me. He masked Christ and baptized Christ. As he was doing that, the Bible said, when Christ was alighted from the river, guess what? Heaven opened. A voice, can I call it a strange voice? And a low voice came from above and said, yes, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well placed. Hear him. He heard. He witnessed all this. He saw the angel, a the coming like a dove upon Jesus Christ. He witnessed it. He presented Jesus Christ to his ministry. He launched Christ to his ministry. He said, now, let me decrease that he might. In John 3, 30, say, now, let me give way. He tattooed, I have done what God called me to do. But henceforth, my ministry is extincting. So that the ministry of Jesus Christ will come to light. He knew the purpose of Jesus Christ. All the facts were laid down for him. The logical reason all were pointed towards Jesus Christ. He knew. He had the evidence of believing in Jesus Christ with him. That he's the true son of the living God. For brothers and sisters, where we take our test from, the same man with all this. All these antecedents. He was jailed. God challenged Herod, the king, of marrying his nephew's wife, the Herodian. And, uh, and that does not go well with Herodian. He was picked up and locked in jail. Now he was in jail. John the Baptist was in jail. The last prophet of the Bible was in jail. Four column. Four war. Liberty was taken. Freedom was taken. Then he called some people. Please go back to Jesus Christ. Are we together? Uh, do you understand? I took my time to lay that foundation. Now, in turn, John the Baptist called somebody and said to Jesus Christ, please go to him. Are you the one? Please. Matthew 11. I read from verse 2. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for another? What changed? What changed? Was he no more a man of faith? Was it not logical enough to know with evidence and proof that this is he that was spoken to be our redeemer and our savior? No, he has all the facts. But circumstances beyond his control. Circumstances beyond his control. If you as a Christian have never been praying, that the Lord will not allow circumstances that will cause you to turn away from righteousness to before you. Please include it in your prayer point from today. I pray it on a daily basis. And I know the reason why I'm praying it. Never say never. Never say never. You're still part of eternity. Blood runs through your veins. And what I run through you, I never say never. Keep praying. And the Lord sustain you. 
Take heed, ye that are standing, lest ye fall. Take heed. You that you think you're strong, a man of faith, a man of God, a woman of God, take heed. Many has gone through this part, and we know their story, how they ended. Pray that yours will not be like that. Amen. Temptations that will cause you to look backward. Trials that will cause you to deny your faith in Christ. Including your prayer point, brothers and sisters. The world is evil. The world is evil. But good thing I want us to know is that, listen, there was one thing that John the Baptist did, and that's what I want you to do. He sent to Jesus Christ and asked for questions. It is good. Oh, no. I wish I just shared the grace, then we go. It is good when you can ask questions. Honest questions. Don't shy away. Don't say they're going to say, I'm silly, I'm stupid. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Is it my sin? This is of my forefather. Ask questions, brothers and sisters. Don't die in silence. You don't know it all. We don't know it all. No one has a monopoly of wisdom. Ask questions. And when you see people taking their time to explain things to you, appreciate them. Yes. Appreciate them. Appreciate them. Not all lecturers want you to be successful. Not all teachers want you to be successful. But there will be a particular one in your life who will identify the seed of God and say, you know what? I will help him. I will help her. Those are destiny helpers. When you see them in your life, identify them and cherish them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Circumstances. Let's go through what circumstances can do to our faith, even as we round up. Circumstances and emotions test our faith. Just as we read in the book of James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. It tests our faith. How strong we are in what we profess to be God. How tired are we with him? Circumstances. Without circumstances, you won't know how good you are in your nature with God. Even as human beings, as human, in your relation with human beings, if there are no challenges, you won't know how strong you are without, how, how strong is your bond to your, with your partner. Don't let me go there. Then, then, we, <laughs> let's focus on the Bible. Praise God. But in the midst of challenges, when you see someone who can stand by you, I appreciate them. They're very uncommon, very rare to find. Very, very uncommon. Very rare to find. But when you find them, embrace them and love them for who they are. They might not be perfect. Appreciate them. Circumstances and emotions test our faith. Secondly, they push our faith beyond limits if unshared. Man of faith, woman of faith, when circumstances comes in, it pushes that your faith Beyond your limits. When you are still in the confines of your limits, you have not been tested. At your comfort, so you are not, your faith is not tested. But beyond your limit, what you can cope with, if care is not taken, that circumstances can push you out. Up to the other side of the cliff. The thief come to kill to see to this one. When temptation is coming, temptation is not coming just to to raise some awareness in you. He's coming to kill you, to pull you down. That's why the devil... They test you to abandon your faith. The excess of the circumstances for you to check your faith. Now you can say, no, I don't think God can help me anymore. Abandon the faith. And seek for alternative. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Circumstances test you to doubt. To doubt in God. To doubt in the promises of God. That's what the circumstances, challenges, and emotions does. We took our time about three weeks. We were talking about depression. <laughs> My goodness. Many are depressed and they never come out of depression. 
many are depressed. They are on medication for life. 10, 12 medication per day. 15 medication per day. And if you don't, don't, don't take it, they can't act normal. What are you talking? It is covered okay to see the destroyer. Devil is not playing with us. He's ready to take us away from our faith. So he can mesmerize our life. And that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. It's not only that, it is not your reason telling you to give up on your faith. It is everything else. Like John, there will come a moment where there is bad news, brothers and sisters. Bad news. Remember the story of, uh, of Elijah, 1st Kings chapter 19, after he successfully killed the priest of, of Baal. And Ahab went to him and told Jezebel his wife what Elijah did. And Jezebel sent unto Elijah and said, Listen, what you did to them, this time tomorrow I'll do to you. When the bad news filtered to the hearing of Elijah, what did Elijah? He ran away. He ran. He, ran. he abandoned faith. A man who success will kill worship. Priest, the priest, high priest of, of Baal and Asherah, 850, he killed in a day. The second day, he ran into the bush. A man who does enjoy grace. He ran. He ran to the Lord. Bible says he ran to Mount Horeb. Mount Horeb is Mount Sinai, the mountain of law. He abandoned grace and ran back to law. I, I pray you get blessed with this. I pray. A prophet. <laughs> Uh, when bad news comes in, and now we know your portion of Jesus. See, when you are in trouble, in danger, when you are in danger and you're in trouble, you are in two opinions. When you are living among a lot of people who do not have faith, who do not have faith, we are not talking of unbelievers now. Among believers, but lack faith, they are the worst dangerous people you can meet in life. You all pray together, you fast together, but their mind is somewhere else. They are, they, when you might want to tell a little lie, do we call it white lie or blue lie? Circumstances. Lies a lie, God bless you, mama. When you when you are tested, when your faith is tested, to say it, you know, to sue the public, political right, so that will not be an odd man out. You are compromising. When you become impatient and go wrong. In actions and reaction, we call it raw rage. Why do you do that? How would we do a hand like this? A Christian. Or you use profane word. If you, I mean, a Christian. And as a pastor, ah, no, no, he, he pushed my button. You have button to be pulled. Somebody push your button. That way is pushing your button. Christians. When you are pressed to acquire shady money, shady business, they partake in shady businesses, quick money. You know, Pastor, this is what is involved. This is what is going on. It's clean, it's clean, it's clean. They gave me 20,000, I'm turning around to 60,000 in two months. Pastor, man of God, woman of God. I say, okay, since I'm not involved, go and do it, then bring my return. Ah, hell is beckoning on you, hell fire. It's beckoning. Is 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 dragging your attention? <laughs> Praise the Lord! <laughs> In all this, your emotion will rise up above your believe brothers and sisters. It is the emotions, not that you lack faith, not that you don't believe, but your emotions rise above your faith in God. And if unchecked, you are falling to the other side of the cliff. Hellfire. 
That will not be our person. Jesus said, I said it. Please ask questions. John did ask questions. They don't send his disciples to him. Go and ask him, should I be looking for somebody else or are you the one? He asked questions. And I know when you ask God, he will answer you. In Matthew 7 to 8, in Luke chapter 7, 7 to 8, he said, ask and ye will receive. Verse 18, for those who ask, receive. And guess what? Jesus Christ responded back unto him. Go and tell him what you see. The blind see. The lame walk. The lepers are clean. Go and tell him. Tell him you have a good reason to ask questions. But anchor your soul to what you have heard from my heavenly father. I am the Messiah. Hey. I am the Messiah. Go and tell him. What you see, brother, I said, what have you seen in the Lord? Does the faith want dying for? Does this faith, we're talking, does this Christ, we're professing, does he want dying for? What has Apostle Paul seen that you haven't seen? When he said, for me to die, then it will be again, I will be with my maker. But for me to live, I will live for Christ. Have you found that? Is that the kind of faith you have in him, in Christ, or in God? Circumstances. We all go through it, and there is no way about it. I said it before. When you are in need, don't pray that the Lord take you out. Pray that the Lord be with you. Pray that the Lord be with you. He promised Abraham father in faith, 25 years later, there was nothing coming. Abraham shouted on the father, I go shy let. That was in a, a response of a faith, a, a, a man of faith. Say, Father, I go, but I go shy let. You have promised me for the past eight years, nothing is happening. Did he look at me now? I'm going shy let. But he anchored his soul. He anchored his soul. He was looking, Bible says, he was looking for a, a, a city. That had no builder, no foundation. Who, whose builder was God? He abandoned his own inheritance. Was looking for a place where God would direct him. Don't be caught up in the world, in the world and in worldliness. Don't be caught up. We build houses. We want to buy cars. We want to. We came with nothing, we end up going with nothing. No one is going to be buried with dollars. After saying that, don't so back in that box. Go back to John and tell him what you see. Tell him to hang on to what God showed him. Tell him what God showed him is the evidence of his faith. I'm speaking to you. I don't know what God has told you. I don't know what God has told you in your vision, in your dream, or maybe he has used a prophet to speak to you. I don't know. Hold on to those evidence. God, you might not see, but you see his word be activated upon your life. Hold on to his word. Use your imagination to measure it. Use your imagination to measure the, the power of God, the presence of God. The goodness of God. You saw imagination. I know that that you are alive. Why does our sick bed you are here? Healthy. You didn't pay. Let me go there. Let me be too sensitive to you. The evidence justify your faith in Christ. Substantiate. Substantiate your faith with good evidence that can anchor your soul, that can strengthen your soul. Believe, even though I don't see this God, he made me, he formed me, he is with me. God sees me, he washes over me. He will not forsake me, he will not abandon me. Yet though I might be weeping now, it's a temporary season. A season of laughter is coming. Though the old woman might be calling me, you know, I'm nothing good for nothing. It's a season, it's a season. Say, sissy, tell them to hold their peace. 
This is not the end of your journey. Amen. Have faith in it. Have faith in it. We have seen, we have heard over and over on Friday, I made mention about FDR. Yes. Anybody know FDR? It's the second president of the United States of America. At the age of tonight, I became paralyzed. Infantile paralysis. Paralyzed waist down. Polio. Infected by polio. At age 39, where why polio was only known to be to be infectious to, to young infants, one to two. At 39, he got his own polio. With all the medical research and everything, nobody knows. They didn't even talk of it. They were diagnosing him for something different until they finally come to the time that this is polio. They became paralyzed. Guess what? He was paralyzed. He became New York governor two times. He was paralyzed. After that, he became the only one serving president who served as a president four times. He was even going to the fifth one. Yet he was paralyzed. Everything limiting you. Everything limiting your life. Everything taking your eyes away from the purposes of God. I speak against them in Jesus' name. Amen. Circumstances that are taking away the praises of God from your lips. I speak against them in the name of Jesus. Amen. The challenges of the world. The power of darkness. The raging effect of the enemy. Taking away the praises of God from your heart also. You that is known to be vibrant, such and ardent when it comes to the things of God, you are suddenly become lukewarm. I speak against such situation in Jesus' name. You that used to be forced to be in charge, you now drag your feet to come to the presence of God. Power that are tying you down, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. You can't find it. Joyful to go to bed when night time is coming, you become angry to because you know you won't be able to sleep. Whatever that has sown the seed of insomnia in your life, I place a curse on it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let the light of God shine upon you. Let the grace of God take you away from where you are to where you are supposed to be. That the name of the Lord be glorified your life in Jesus' name. For it is written, go into the world and be fruitful. Multiply, take dominion, and have authority over all that God has created. I activate your sonship authority, your womanship authority. From above, I activate it in Jesus' name. Everything working contrary to the plans, the purposes, the will of God for you and your household. I rebuke them in Jesus' name. God say, I will rebuke the opposition for your sins. And 105, verse 14 and 15 say, Touch not my anointing, because you have believed in Christ, and you have confessed him as a Lord and personal Savior. Anything opposing your advancement, your health, your joy, your marriage, your going out, your coming, your establishment, your fruitfulness, I ask God to rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. You are for all, you will not forsake us. We trust, we call, have confidence in you. When the trumpet will sound, you and I will be worthy to be in the presence of our maker. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Stand on your favor and sister. Pastor Shina, come and take her offering, please. Put your hands together.